mankind's road to the stars had its unsung heroes. One of them was the Soviet cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov, his space flight on Soyuz 1, made him the first Soviet cosmonaut to fly into outer space more than once. And he became the first human to die on a space mission, he was killed when the Soyuz 1 space capsule crashed after re-entry on April 24, 1967, due to a parachute failure. This photograph shows the charred remains of Komarov being looked over by Soviet officials during his open casket funeral. Only a chipped heel bone survived the crash. All this foretold tragedy started with the 50th anniversary of the founding of the Soviet Union, and the government demanded something big from the space program. Leonid Brezhnev, leader of the Soviet Union, decided to stage a spectacular mid-space rendezvous between two Soviet spaceships. The plan was for two Soviet space vehicles to launch into space, and perform a dramatic orbital docking that would allow cosmonauts to move between ships. The first capsule to be launched would be the Soyuz 1, with Komarov inside. The next day, a second vehicle Soyuz 2 would take off, with two additional cosmonauts. The two vehicles would meet, dock, Komarov would crawl from one vehicle to the other, exchanging places with a colleague and come home in the second ship. Brezhnev made it very clear he wanted this to happen. Komarov was selected to command the Soyuz 1 in 1967, with Yuri Gagarin as his backup cosmonaut. Both knew the space capsule was not safe to fly, but everyone in space program was terrified of Brezhnev's reaction to the mission being delayed or scrubbed. Komarov told friends he knew he would probably die, but he wouldn't back out because he didn't want Gagarin to die. Vladimir Komarov was among Gagarin's best friends, their families often got together, and on rare times when both men were free, they would go hunting together. According to book Starman, Komarov answered, if I don't make this flight, they'll send the backup pilot instead, and he'll die instead of me, we've got to take care of him. That was Yuri Gagarin. Vladimir Komarov couldn't do that to his friend. There were serious problems that would make this machine dangerous to navigate in space. The pre-test flights had been disconcerting, the technicians who had inspected the Soyuz 1 had found 203 structural problems. The trouble started at once when one of the Soyuz's two solar panels failed to deploy, starving the craft of electrical power and obscuring some of the navigation equipment. Other glitches developed as the day went on. The first attempt to change the spacecraft's orbit was unsatisfactory, the ship began to rotate around its axis, and only spun more when Komarov tried to correct the problem. The thermal control system degenerated, communications with the ground became irregular, and lack of electricity prevented the astro-orientation system from operating. Seeing all these problems the ground control decided to abandon the Soyuz 2 launch, and bring Komarov home at the first available opportunity. Komarov tried unsuccessfully to orient the Soyuz module for five hours, the craft was transmitting unreliable status information, and communications were lost. Using procedures that he had never practiced in training, Komarov managed to align the spacecraft and fire the retro rockets himself. Despite his heroic efforts to save the mission, worse was to come. He successfully re-entered the Earth's atmosphere on his 19th orbit, but as the cabin descended through the atmosphere the drogue parachute came out. But the main parachute remained stubbornly in its container. When the reserve chute was popped out, it tangled in the lane of the drag chute of the main parachute. Soyuz 1 crashed at great speed into the step at Orenburg at 7 a.m., killing Komarov. The cabin exploded on impact, and when Soviet Air Force recovery teams arrived, all they found was burning metal, the rim of the top of Soyuz being the only hardware they could identify. Vladimir Komarov's death seems to have been almost scripted. Yuri Gagarin said as much in an interview he gave to Pravda, weeks after the crash, he sharply criticized the officials who had let his friend fly. He was profoundly depressed that he hadn't been able to persuade Brezhnev to cancel Komarov's launch. 
One year after Komarov's death, Gagarin died when he crashed a fighter jet. Komarov was honored with a state funeral in Moscow, and his ashes were interred in the Kremlin Wall Necropolis at Red Square. Komarov was posthumously awarded his second Order of Lenin, and also the Order of Hero of the Soviet Union. But why did they give him an open casket service? Komarov demanded it personally, because he wanted to send a message to the government officials who had caused his death. He knew the castle was unsafe and that he would very likely die, he knew he would not be returning alive so he made the demand before launching. His final revenge was forcing his superiors to look at what they had done. Komarov is widely regarded as a hero who met a needlessly horrific death. In the history of mankind's journey to space, Vladimir Komarov's name is written in bold, and will always be remembered. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and share.